I think the best one can uh, try to do is to relate our um, ability to affect the future and remember the past to the more general question of the uh, so-called second law of thermodynamics, that is the idea that disorder tends to increase with time. Um, now there are various ways in which one can try to make a relationship between that and our own abilities and I think the way, uh, the way I would prefer myself to think of it is that um, our uh, this psychological arrow of time is probably associated with the biological arrow, the fact that we start as small babies and grow larger and eventually die. And that in turn, uh, the, the fact that biological systems tend to develop in this way is associated with the so-called electromagnetic arrow of time because by, uh, plants, for example, and for that matter animals, need to take in sunlight in order to build it. So the, the light has to be coming out from the sun rather than going into it. Um, and that, um, uh, that in turn is probably a special case uh, in some sense of the thermodynamic error of time, the fact that disorder tends to increase with time. But now why uh, there should be a uh, particular direction in which disorder increases with time is really, the, I think, the big question, or one of, one of the big questions. Uh, there's a very uh, intense debate uh, which goes on, being, uh, people who are expert in, in the area of cosmology, about whether uh, the fact that uh, disorder is increasing is associated with the fact that the universe is expanding. Uh, we do believe that, uh, for all sorts of reasons, that the, the universe started off in a state of surprisingly low disorder. And then the question is, uh, is there some good reason for that? We know that it was very, very, um, uh, very small, or very, very, very dense, and very, very, very hot at the so-called hot Big Bang. Uh, but it's also, it also seems to be the fact that it was extremely well ordered, extremely smooth, and that uh, the, the mystery is: was there a, uh, is there some underlying reason for that, or did it just happen? Since I am, have now passed my 70th birthday, I certainly wish that that were true. <laughs> but uh, alas, uh, as, as far as we know, at present at least uh, it is not. Um, I personally think that um, in some, uh, some sense which I find difficult to define, the next major revolution in physics will have something to do with the arrow of time. But whether it will actually allow us uh, in any meaningful sense to reverse the arrow of time, I don't know and I rather doubt it. <laughs> Um, people uh, sometimes speculate on these things, but uh, uh, certainly we have, uh, if, if it were true, if it should be true, then we are many, many decades away from doing so, I think. <laughs> no, well, if, if we could really change the arrow of time over... Um, over, over regions of space and uh, distances in time which in some sense were unmeaningful to us as human beings then I think that would be just totally revolutionary I mean one can't, I think it's even difficult to imagine what the consequences would be I think that's a very very improbable situation I think it's conceivable that in, in some sense which again I find rather difficult to define in the distant future we may be able to reverse, in some sense reverse the error of time over short times and for small regions of space. Somehow I very much doubt whether we're going to be able to reverse it overall. If we could, uh, I think things would be so strange that one can't even imagine it.